what is the impulse response of an RC circuit? Well, here we have the most basic RC circuit with a resistor and a capacitor. And you might use this circuit, for example, in an audio application where XT might be the signal from a microphone. And you might connect an amplifier across these terminals here to amplify the signal into a speaker. So we've got an input signal and an output signal. And we want to understand what the effect of this circuit is on the signal. Well, we know that this is a linear time invariant system. And for such systems, we know that the impulse response characterizes the system. So we need to find the impulse response. We know that the output equals the input convolved with the impulse response. So now we can look in the Laplace domain and we use the properties of Laplace domain that tells us that in, in Laplace, we have the output equals the multiplication of the input with the system response, which is the Laplace transform of the impulse response. And this uh, implies for us, we can divide both sides by X of S. So we know that the system response equals the Laplace transform of the output divided by the Laplace transform of the input. So let's try and find an expression for this ratio for this circuit here. Well, we can use standard circuit uh, analysis to look at the voltage drop around this loop. And we can write an equation here. We can write that XT equals the, that's the voltage across here, equals the voltage drop across the resistor plus the voltage drop across the capacitor. Across the resistor, it's current times resistance. So the resistance equals R and the current is the same current through the capacitor. And we know that the current through a capacitor is the capacitance times the derivative of the voltage with respect to time. So this is the resistance times the current, which is the voltage drop across the resistor, plus the voltage drop across the capacitor, which equals Y of T. So now we have an equation that relates the input signal to the output signal. We can take the Laplace transform of each of these terms and look in the Laplace domain. So now we have the Laplace transform of X equals R times C. And there's a property of derivatives where we know that the derivative gives us in the Laplace domain S times the Laplace transform of the signal that's having the derivative taken of it. So it equals S times Y of S. Plus we've got the Laplace transform of Y of T. So now we have this equation here and we can collect all of the Y S's together and divide them by the X S's to get this system function over here. So let's do that now. Uh, this equals RCS plus one times Y of S. And I'm gonna divide everything through by RC um, because that's gonna help us to take this transform. And I'll just write this over here that we have H of S for this circuit here equals one divided by RC divided by one divided by RC plus S. Now this is in the standard form of uh, Laplace transforms. You can look up Laplace transform inverse tables here to get the inverse Laplace of this. Of course, you need to know about the region of convergence. So let's just think about that just quickly. Uh, so we know that we're gonna look at the S plane here. So this is the uh, possible values of this parameter S, the Laplace parameter, and it is a complex number. It has a real value sigma and an imaginary value omega. Uh, don't forget, I'll just write that here, S equals sigma plus J omega, where J is the complex variable. Okay, so here, uh, if we want to look in this plane, uh, we can, uh, to work out the region of convergence, well, this function here has a pole when S equals minus one on RC, because that would make this transfer function here go to infinity. So where's that over here? That means S is a real number, so there's no imaginary component. So it's at the value here, negative one on RC. So that's where the pole is. And we know that the system here is a real system that you can really build. So that means the system is causal. That means that it has a right-handed impulse response because uh, for a system like this, the output can't respond before the input. That can't be happening for any real system that you can build. 
Uh, that's what, what causal means. So it means a right-handed impulse response. And that means that we're going to have a right-handed region of convergence. So that means we're going to be seeing the region of convergence is between this pole and positive infinity for sigma. And it doesn't matter what the value of omega is. So we plot this whole region here. That is the region of convergence. So now we can use this information that we know the region of convergence uh, and we can look up a standard tables for this transfer function here of the form one divided by a plus s and where a is one on RC. And we can then write down that the impulse response h of t is going to equal one divided by RC. That's that constant here times the exponential of minus t divided by RC times the step function. So here we've found the impulse response for this RC circuit. It's of this form here. And if I plot that here, then it's going to be, as we expect, of course, it's a right-handed function. If this is the time here, and this is this impulse response, it's zero for negative time. And then it's a, a negative exponential, which means it's an exponential coming down like this. Uh, and the rate of decay of that exponential is one on RC. Okay, so this is the impulse response. And what can it tell us? Well, if we take the Fourier transform of this, of course, we get the system uh, frequency response. And that's what we might be interested in to know how this circuit has altered the signal coming from the input to the output. Um, Let's think about that. Well, we already have that. If we wanted to find out the frequency response, all we have to do is to set S equal to J omega here. We set sigma equal to zero into this equation. And that will give us the frequency response. So if we have just J omega here, then you can try to uh, see how to plot this function. Let's just see if we can get some intuition though from this function here and thinking about this region of convergence. It helps to understand Laplace transforms and its relation to Fourier transforms. So let me try and just replot this plane here. We call this the S plane because it's the values of S, sigma and J omega in the plane of the paper here. Let me try and plot this in three dimensions where, the, uh, where those two dimensions here are in this uh, place here. And then I'm going to plot the sigma value here. And so I'm trying to plot, if you can imagine that a three dimensional plane where now the, the region of the, the S plane here is now drawn as this function here, uh, this direction here and that direction there. So we're kind of getting a three dimensional aspect to it. And the vertical is now going to be the system function H of S. So now what have we got for our, where is our pole? Well, our pole is along this sigma axis here. So that's this pole here, this where I'm going to put that uh, x value there. And then we know that at that value, h of s, this function here, is going to equal infinity because s gives a zero on the bottom here. So above that pole, we are now, or above that value of s, we're going to have an infinitely big value for h of s. We also know that when s is very large, we've got a very large number on the denominator. So the transfer function is going to be very small, going towards zero in all directions of S, whether it's large in sigma or large in omega. So I can try to plot that here, just sketch that here. It's a function coming down here. Uh, it's going to be going up like this, it's going to be going down as omega goes positive. Um, as, as we move along the sigma axis, it's coming down here going along like this, coming to zero, and of course in the negative as well. So visualizing this H of S, the Laplace transform of the uh, impulse response, the Laplace transform looks like this in three dimensions. Now let's try to think of what that is for the Fourier transform to get the, uh, the frequency response of our circuit. Um, in, and uh, another, as I said, that's the Fourier transform of the impulse response for that, uh, we get that, as I said, by setting sigma equal to zero. So let's think about that. Where is that on the S plane? Well, when sigma equals zero, that's this axis here, the omega axis. And in our three dimensional plot, that's this line along here. So if we look at the value of the transfer function H of S above that omega, if you can picture that in your mind's eye, then it's crossing 
at that value here, because this is when sigma equals zero and omega equals zero, you're gonna have that value there. And as you move along the omega axis in a negative direction, you can hopefully visualize that that will be coming down and as a positive direction, that will be going down as well. Uh, the way to visualize that is if you went through the pole and you started down here at a negative value through the pole, I'll draw that one in red here, then uh, you'll be going along that line. Uh, then here you'll be rising up to infinity and then coming down if you were to be going along the line that goes through the pole. If you go along the line that is for corresponds to sigma equals zero, then you're going to see the green shape. And I'll just draw some vertical lines in here to try to shade that in. You imagine that that is a slice through the system function h of s, a slice when sigma equals zero. So if I plot that now, uh, and we can see what the Fourier transform is going to look like here, then for o values of omega, and now I'm plotting the magnitude of h of omega, that's when sigma equals zero, it's going to look like this green shape here. And this is the frequency response of this RC circuit. And if you look at this and think about this, uh, it's, uh, I haven't done a great job of drawing it here, but it is symmetrical. And what you're seeing is that the high frequencies are being suppressed and the low frequencies are being passed by this circuit. So the effect of this circuit is a low pass filter. So by understanding the impulse response, analyzing the impulse response using Laplace transforms and recognizing the relationship between the Laplace transform and the Fourier transform, we're able to get a good picture on the effect of this RC circuit. Some of the things from a design perspective that we might be interested in is if we, what's gonna happen if we choose different values of R and C, well, we can clearly see here if either R is increased or C is increased, so the value of that resistor or the value of that capacitor, if either of those is increased, then this pole is going to move towards the origin because the denominator would be getting larger, so the one on RC would be getting smaller, so we'd be moving towards the origin. When that happens, as this pole moves towards the origin, if you can picture it in this 3D case, this green shape is going to be getting a larger value at zero and then coming down uh, more um, quickly from the, uh, coming down more quickly as you move away from zero uh, frequency. That means the, the system is gonna be acting even more like a low pass filter. It's gonna be suppressing the large frequencies even more. Uh, and that means that you're gonna be uh, doing a, great, a better job at uh, suppressing noise if it was this uh, system here in an audio amplifier, but it might also end up suppressing some of the frequencies in the audio range, which might not be what you want. So from an engineering design perspective, you can look at the Laplace transform and you can visualize the effect of changing different parameters on the Fourier transform. So it's a very helpful, Laplace transform is a very helpful uh, visualization for designing real circuits. So if this video has helped, please give it a like. It helps others to find the video. Uh, you of course can subscribe to the channel for more videos and you can check out the description below. You'll find a link to a web page which has a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel. And if you'd like to help me out, you might want to join the channel. You can hit that join button and that would be very much appreciated.